Hello and welcome to Community Church. It is great to have you with us today. Whether you're worshipping us online or at one of our services, you're very welcome here. We've got lots coming up this coming month. So get your diaries out and this is what's happening at Community Church. We had a great start to Alpha last Tuesday, but don't worry if you missed out, you can still book in. So whatever questions you have about faith, about Christianity, about Jesus, please, if you've got those questions, do book in on the link on screen now. Corporate prayer is coming up this Wednesday, the 2nd of February at 8 p.m. in Chadwell St. Mary. There is no online option this time around, so please do your best to come and let's pray together as a church. So please do your best to try and make it down there. It's not something you want to miss. If you enjoyed the message last week, it was all about belonging to an apostolic group of churches and would like to know what's happening with the group of churches we're part of, Relational Mission, there's a great event coming up for you. Relational Mission Together Online is on Wednesday the 9th of February, 8 till 9pm. It's on YouTube and it's a great opportunity to find out what is going on in the world of Relational Mission. So please do your best to try and make it onto YouTube for that time. We are looking for people with a heart to help asylum seekers. There's going to be a meeting on the 12th of February, 9.30am to 12.30pm. It's for people interested in getting involved in initiatives to support local asylum seeking families. If you email Elle, she will give you the details. If you're a student or 20 something, we have a great event coming up for you. It's called One Day, as it's one day to reignite your passion, rediscover your purpose, and reconnect with each other. It'll be a great event. It's in Ipswich at the Hope Centre and it's on Saturday 26th of February. And if you book in now, it's only £15, including dinner. So if you have any questions or would like to know a bit more about the event, please feel free to email me. We don't want anyone to miss out. Tomorrow is the last day for the early bird price of £15. After that, it goes up to £25. So please book in as soon as possible. Are you part of a life group? If not, why not? We would love it if everyone in our congregation was part of one. So if you're not part of one or would just like to know a bit more information, please email Deb. Or alternatively, you can find out more on the contact page of the app. Thank you so much for continuing to give your tithes and offerings. If you'd like to give today, you can do so on our app or on our church website. Details are on the screen now. Have you downloaded our app yet? It's free to download from all app stores and is the best way to keep up with all that's going on at Community Church. You can check out our events, find out when and where our services are, catch up with past teaching and give your tithes and offerings. So if you go to the app store, search for Community Church UK and get connected. We hope you have a wonderful time worshipping with us today. Enjoy the service. Welcome to Community Church Online. It's great to have you with us on this Sunday, the 30th of January, uh, 2022. Uh, we've been looking at vision uh, throughout January. We're going to continue that teaching today as we look at, at life groups and the importance of life groups. But first, we're going to worship. We're going to pray. We're going to come before God uh, to give him all the glory. I uh, hope you enjoy uh, uh, the, our time together today. But let us pray uh, before we start. Lord, we thank you uh, that we can gather in our different homes. Uh, Lord, we pray, Holy Spirit, meet with us just where we are. And minister to us, Lord, uh, through our, our worship, through our prayers, and through your word. And Lord, I pray that uh, we will uh, be encouraged in Jesus uh, through this next hour. Uh, Lord, that you will uh, be with us, you will build us up, uh, Lord, you will lead us and guide us, and you will minister to us, Lord, whatever the needs, uh, whatever our situation, I pray, Holy Spirit, minister to each one uh, as we gather in our homes today. Lord, bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together.
Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days.
During the next song, there's an opportunity to give to the Lord of tithes and offerings. There will be a QR code and a, an address come up. Please just connect into that. Please give as the Lord leads. Uh, it's been used for the extension of the kingdom, for the work of the church. Uh, thank you so much for your generosity. And as we worship in this next song, please give as the Lord leads. Thank you. During this song, there'll be an opportunity to give. You should see the QR code in the corner. As was mentioned in the notices, you can just scan the QR code to give to the church, to give to God, help the work of God to continue, even in this time. What good is it to gain the whole world, but lose your soul? good is it to make a sweet sound but remain proud in view of God's mercies I offer my own oh, here I am let it be Say and do, let my life honor you. Here I am, living for your glory. Sing the first verse again. What good is it to gain the whole world, but lose your soul? What good is it to make a sweet sound, and remain proud? In view of I offer my own and take my life, let it be everything, all of me. Here I am, use me for your glory. In everything I say and do, let my life honor you. Here I am, living for your glory. The road I'm on leads no without you the life I live defines me in surrender in view of God's mercy I offer my own I'll take my life let it be Take my life, let it be everything, all of me. Here I am, use me for your glory. In everything I say and do, let my life honor you. Here I am, living for your glory. Seeking first the Take my life, let it be everything, all of me. Here I am, use me for your glory. In everything I say and do, let my life honor you. Here I am, living for your glory. So take. 
my life, let it be everything, all of me, where I am, use me for your glory. In everything I say and do, let my life honor you, here I am, living for your glory. Yes, here I am. During January, we've been looking at vision. We've, we've been looking at the vision for the whole church. We've looked at vision uh, for each of our sites. Uh, we took a week when we looked at, at what it means to belong to an apostolic family of churches, relational mission. Uh, and today we're going to look at life groups and how it is so important uh, that we belong to a small group uh, during the week, that we belong to that fellowship uh, as part of the church. We have really at the heart of the fellowship, at the heart of Community Church, our life groups. We call them life groups. Other churches might call them home groups or other names, uh, but basically they're small groups uh, that meet together. And, and they, these are our main uh, strategic focus and they're really at the centre of life for Community Church. And uh, these life groups are small groups, these community of believers uh, uh, who meet uh, and, and are worship and word and, and, and prayer-centred, spirit-filled and on mission together. Uh, we, we have life groups at the moment across Thurrock and into Basildon and uh, we would love you to connect into that uh, wherever the nearest one is for you. What do we do when we meet together? Well, First of all, uh, we focus on God, uh, we, we worship, uh, we, we enjoy looking at the Word and exploring the Word together, we, we pray together, we share communion together. Uh, these are things that just focus us on Jesus, focus us on God and, and help us uh, to grow in Him. Secondly, we, we are together, so we, we, we fellowship together, we build friendships together, we support one another, we encourage one another, and, and there's some accountability as well together. I, I love our life groups, I, I love being part of a life group. When I, our life group has a WhatsApp group, and, and we see the care and the love and the prayer that goes through that as we, we just share together what's happening in our lives. There's a wonderful sense of fellowship, a wonderful sense of friendship. Uh, we eat together, we, we gather together, it's great. It's important, uh, pastorally as well, that's where all our pastoral uh, work starts. We're, we're encouraging and supporting and pastoring one another through our life groups. And then thirdly, uh, we are looking out. So we're, we're looking to reach our communities, our neighbours, our friends, our work colleagues. Uh, we, we try and do evangelism together, outreach together. We're on mission together to grow the group, uh, to multiply the group out. So, so those are the things that we do in, in our small groups, in our life groups. And a life group is not separate from the church. It's, the, the life group takes on all the values, all the purposes, all the vision of community church, and, and they just apply it into the local setting. And as we set vision, and we have been setting vision over these past weeks, the life group will grab hold of that, and they will contribute towards the overall vision of community church. It might look slightly different in different communities and different contexts, but overall they will be contributing to the vision that God has given to us. It'd be a small group of maybe 15 to 20 adults, and sometimes when we gather together we would have our, all our families with us, all the children with us, and we would eat together and share together, um, but it's a small group, and it's led by a, a, a leadership team. We we don't always get four, but we're looking to have four leaders uh, because that helps with multiplication. Uh, if you've got four leaders that are leading this group, uh, so we're always aiming to build leaders into uh, our life groups. And we want every life group to have a heart for multiplication, to grow, to intentionally prepare for multiplication by raising leaders. And once you reach around 20 adults, just to, to prepare to multiply out, to, to split into two and to grow in that way. Of course, they're not independent from the church, so still come under the uh, authority, the accountability of the church through the elders and trustees. Uh, we, we, we 
we release the, the life groups and the leaders, um, but there's also some support and some accountability there as well. There's, there's a, we meet in homes as life groups, and there's a biblical precedent uh, for meeting in homes. It's a great thing for us to do. Um, Jesus did it. If we was to turn to Mark chapter 1, we see that Jesus uh, met in homes. He met in lots of different places. You know, he was walking along the Sea of Galilee and met the fishermen there and, and, and invited them to, to follow him. That was, so he actually is in the workplace there. He went into the synagogue um, and, and started to teach there. And, uh, and so he was in the public place. But when we get to uh, Mark chapter uh, 1, verse uh, 29, it says, as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. And so Jesus went into the home and they, there, there's lots of people, actually the whole town gathered at the door. Uh, they were gathering at the home uh, to see Jesus. So there's a principle here that Jesus ministered in homes just as he much did in the workplace and in the public place. And uh, we also see this very much in the early church. Uh, if we was to go through Acts, you would find how many times uh, they meet in homes. It's quite a few. Acts chapter 2, verse 46 uh, says that every day they continue to meet together in the temple court, so there's the public place, um, and ate together, uh, sorry, and they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. So again, we see the early church meeting in the public place and in homes. And, and this continues, um, chapter 12, it says, um, verse 12, chapter 12, verse 12 in Acts. And it says, oh, right, so this is Peter just coming out of prison. And uh, he, he says, when he had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. In Acts chapter 17, uh, in Thessalonica, we see that, they, that Jason, they met in Jason's house. He welcomed them into this house. And on and on, we can see this precedent in the, in the New Testament of meeting in homes. And there's something that we need to keep doing, uh, which is important about meeting in homes. First of all, your home is not yours. It's a resource of God. If you own a home, if you've got somewhere to live, then it, it, it's of God and, and it's to be used for him. It's not something to be kept uh, apart from everything else. No, this is, Lord, this is your home. What do you want me to do with it? And actually the meeting of God's people there is one of the things that you can do. The thing about meeting in home is that there's hospitality. And the Bible says we should be hospitable. We should welcome people in. And so we need to be meeting in people's homes so there is hospitality. Often it in, in life group when they've come into our house we would put the kettle on and we would make the tea and coffee someone would bring in some cakes someone would bring in some biscuits and we would share together sometimes we have a meal when everyone just brings something and we share uh, together the hospitality is important uh, when we gather together in homes of course friendship there's much easier to have friendship in in that smaller environment than it is or maybe when we gather uh, as a church all together on a Sunday morning and of course, if you're meeting in a home, then you're actually in a neighbourhood. And so you can connect and have mission into that neighbourhood. Uh, you have uh, ownership, you have uh, uh, accountability. You can, you can work into the, the, your neighbourhood and your neighbours and you can bring something that, uh, into that context that maybe we couldn't do as a whole church together. And of course, multiplication. If we're meeting in homes and the group grows, it's very, very easy just to open another home. And suddenly you've got two homes and there's no cost to that. It's just easy and quick to multiply out home by home by home by home. And, and we can grow the church uh, through multiplying into homes. Of course, small groups uh, lead to lots of advantages for the church. First of all, it increases ministry. If we just gathered, I mean, at a community church, maybe we've got 300 people. If we gathered just as 300 people, the amount of people that can be involved in ministry uh, is quite small. Uh, there'll be lots of people serving, but there'll be one or two people ministering. And so when we meet in small groups, it means we increase opportunities for ministry. More people can prophesy, more people can bring a word, more people can teach. All of this ministry and can, can participate. We, the, the priesthood of believers can operate uh, in these small groups. More leaders, more participation. And um, we can see that as one of the advantages of small groups. Another one is that uh, we increase friendships. 
and pastoral care. When you're meeting together regularly you, in those small groups, you get to know one another. You get to share more, and then you get to care for one another. It's lovely. Uh, in, in our WhatsApp group for life, someone said, oh, I've got COVID, and I've had to isolate. And straight away, you get, oh, can we help you? Can we bring you? Can we go shopping for you? All of this care just happens naturally in those small groups, which is beautiful and is where it should be. And we still have pastoral care as a whole church. Of course we do. And if, if there's something happening in a small group that's too big for the group uh, to deal with, then we can all uh, then uh, get involved. The elders can get involved. Others can get involved. Um, but the first point of call for pastoral care is uh, our life groups. And then, of course, I want to say uh, that our life groups are fun. You know, we, we enjoy it's not a hardship. They're good fun. We, we have a laugh. We enjoy friendship. We enjoy being together. And of course, uh, uh, there's no reason that a small group can't do everything that the big church can do. You know, we don't, we, there's no reason for the, 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 the life group not to be able to do everything we see, uh, for example, in Acts chapter 2. Um, it says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. We can open the word together. People can teach. We can learn together. We can explore together. To fellowship, breaking to bread, breaking the bread. And the Bible says that they broke bread in their homes. You don't have to be in, in the church building. You don't have to have some special priest uh, to anoint the bread and, and the wine. No, we can share communion in our homes together. We can do that. We can pray together. We can see signs and wonders. We can see the Spirit moving in our life groups. Uh, we can uh, share things together, support one another. Uh, we can just witness together. All of those things that we can do uh, corporately together as a, as a church, we can also do when we're in our small groups. You can do everything that the church can do. You're released to do it. There's no restrictions. This week, as we've been working through vision in January, this week we're asking our life groups to look at strategy, to look at their vision. What is their part? We've set the big vision for community church. We've talked about the, the, the vision for each of the sites. What is the life group's part to play in this vision? What is their strategy? And we, as we've got in our, our vision statement, we've divided it into three aspects. First of all, what is their strategy for discipleship. How are they going to grow in the Lord in 2022, both corporately and individually? What are, the, what are they going to do together that will encourage us to, to be more uh, in love with Jesus, more f following his ways, living lives according to his word? How are we going to disciple one another uh, in the coming year? And the disciples also, how are they going to disciple new Christians? As people are saved and join in, what's their discipleship strategy? What are they going to do? Now, we've got lots of resources to help that. Uh, we've got the three-thirds strategy. We've got the D Discovery Bible Study, the Commands of Christ. Those are the tools that we use. Uh, but setting that strategy to, to lay it out into the life group, how are we going to disciple new Christians? And what goals are they going to set for 22 to connect with God? and to connect and be obedient with his word. What, what's the, 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 the goals that they're going to set? Are they going to have a reading plan? We're, we're reading as a church the through the New Testament. What's the life group going to connect into? What, how are they going to encourage one another to connect with God? Maybe it's through fasting. Maybe it's through uh, prayers at different times. Whatever it is, how can the life group set a goal uh, to connect with God during this year? And as they do that, uh, can, they, can each life group have some loving accountability? that you hold each other accountable to, for holy living, uh, for obedience, for, for walking with God. How can we do that in our life groups uh, to be accountable to one another as we journey with Jesus this year? And then also in discipleship, how can we raise up new leaders? How can we raise up new life group leaders and leaders in other ministries because as we multiply we're going to need many many new leaders so these are the sort of questions we're going to be asking our life groups you know about discipleship how can we do these things together and then we're going to ask them about community engagement what is their strategy for community engagement how are they going to connect with their neighbourhood? What are their plans? What are their strategies? What can they do to connect with their neighbourhood? How can they be a blessing to their community? What can they bring a, a generous spirit to bless their neighbours, to bless their community? And how can they serve 
their community? How can they connect in and see what the needs are and then try to uh, respond to those needs? So we, we need to have a community engagement strategy so that we can uh, engage with the people uh, around us. And then the final question that we're going to be asking is how are they going to be sharing the gospel? What is their gospel strategy? First of all, are they all equipped to share the gospel? Do they know what to say when God gives them the opportunity? Will your life group commit uh, to each person sharing the gospel once a week? Praying for that opportunity. Lord, at least once a week, let me tell someone about you. Let me share the gospel with somebody. Will they commit with that? What is the outreach strategy for the life group? What are you doing as a small group to reach out to those who need Jesus? As a church, we're praying for uh, one person to be saved and added every single week. That's 52 people in 2022. What is your life group's contribution towards that? What are you believing for as a life group? Uh, your contribution to the 52. Are you believing, are you going to be praying and believing for one a month, for example? Are you going to be praying and believing that God will give you six new disciples in 2020? What is your strategy for reaching out for the gospel? What is your goal? What is God saying to you? What are you praying for, for 2022? And, and so we're, we're, we're just looking at this as a life group so we can set direction, we can set program, we can set strategy, we can set our prayers as we go into the year ahead so that we know that we can see how we disciple one another is according to the word that we can grow in Jesus. How can we get connected into our community and be effective and be a blessing to those around us? And how can we share the gospel and see people saved and added? And then, of course, we want to multiply out. As we do that, we want to multiply out our life groups so that we, by the end of 2022, that we will have many, many more life groups than we had at the beginning of 2022. So if you are listening to this online and you're thinking, well, that's lovely, but I, I, I'm not part of a life group, well, I want to invite you to join. If you're living in Thurrock or in Basildon uh, in the UK, we'd love you to join into one of our life groups. Go to our website, you'll go to life groups and you'll see where, oh, how you can connect into our life groups and commit to be there. Commit to join regularly into that group uh, and, and be blessed by doing that and be a blessing to those that you are meeting with. So will you commit to be part of our life group in 2022? If you're not in our area here in Thurrock or Basildon, you might be in a different city or a different nation, then please just contact us. We'd love to help you start a small group like this, to start a discipleship group, to start a life group, whatever you want to call it, so that you too can be caught up in the mission of God. You too can be encouraging others in their discipleship. You too can be growing in Jesus day by day, week by week. We need each other. We need to be together. We need to encourage one another and together we can reach the lost so that they too can follow Jesus. This is our, our big vision uh, brought right down to the small groups. Each one taking their part, playing their part in the vision that God has given us. I'd like to encourage us to commit to life groups in 2022, to be part of a small group, as well as the big celebration, it's great to be part of a small group. So let's pray, let us pray for our life groups, let's pray for our life group leaders, uh, let's pray for multiplication, uh, let's pray for growth as we go through the rest of 2022. Please join me as we pray together. Lord, we thank you for the gathering of your people. Now, we see in the New Testament, they gathered in the public place, uh, they gathered in the synagogues, they, they gathered in school halls, but they regularly gathered in homes. And Lord, as we gather in homes uh, midweek in, in what we call life groups, Lord, we pray your blessing upon those gatherings. We pray that you will build us up in you, that we will encourage one another, spur one another on. We will grow together. Lord, I pray for accountability uh, on the way that we live our lives, that we will commit to holy living. We pray for accountability in the way that we connect to you. I pray for accountability in the way we share the gospel and, and, and share with others, Lord. I pray that we will feel that, that people are, are 
loving uh, us and serving us and, and blessing us as we join together. We pray for the pastoral care in groups. There will be such a love in the groups that every need will be met. And Lord, we pray that these groups will grow and multiply. And Lord, that you will see, uh, Lord, many new groups started in 2022 for your glory and for your namesake. So Lord, we pray, build your church. Build your church, uh, Lord. Be glorified. Uh, and Lord, may we reach many, many souls for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us as we open the word bless you may we continue to be together to gather together but also know that as we go uh, Jesus is with us and he will use us for his glory wherever he sends us God bless you
trusting in your blood for your faithfulness. 